All right, let's talk about baseball. Let's talk about that baseball analogy that I keep wanting to get around to here. So for every major league baseball player, there are tons of people that never make it out of the minors. And the minor leagues have several levels to them. You have rookie, single A, double A, triple A. There could be triple A players that never get called up to the majors for whatever reason. They never make it past triple A. They're always riding buses to their baseball games instead of flying in planes. One of the infamous differences between the major leagues and the minor leagues. <laughs> oh. So there could be people that are in the majors for a little bit, but they don't really become all that great at the major league level. So they get sent back down to the minors and the thought of going back to the minors makes them just leave, just retire from baseball altogether. There's a lot of minor league baseball in Connecticut when I was growing up. There were three teams. There are teams in Norwich, New Britain, and New Haven, all double A levels. So in the middle of the progression curve for in the middle of the progression curve for becoming a major league baseball player. And so I, I actually have in my old baseball card collection, which my dad learning from the generations, my grandfather threw out his baseball card collection. So when I went off to college and went off on my own, he didn't throw out mine. Gave it back to me not too long ago, so uh, it's a little piece of nostalgia here, but I have a decent amount, besides major league players, I have a decent amount of minor league baseball cards from all those minor league teams. And there's one guy I remember reading in the yearbook for one of the minor league teams, 27 years old, he retired from baseball at double A level. And I'm like, why does he retire? I said, Dad, why did this guy retire? He got to double A. And he said, well, he probably didn't think he'd get any further. So he got some skills elsewhere and went somewhere and hung it up with his baseball career. So the truth of the matter is you have your major league stars. Then you have your regular major league people that you never hear anything about. Their cards are common cards. They're never worth very much. And then you have tons and tons of people who never make it out of triple A, double A, single A, what have you. Or they have a career ending injury. But we don't even need to talk about playing baseball in the minor leagues to talk about the fact that you and I, if the conditions were right, could get some gloves, bats, balls, go out to a field and play a game right now. It, would, it wouldn't be as interesting as watching the pros, but that's the thing. You and I could probably play baseball in some way, shape, or form right now. Oh, but what if, you, if, you're, like, if you're in a wheelchair or something, you could just wheel around the bases or something? The truth of the matter is, though, that the ability to play ball at any level is not something that takes hardly anything. So, well, what if someone's in a wheelchair on crutches? Well, they'll be really, really slow, won't they? But, I mean, when there's a will, there's a way. Just the results are going to vary. So, I don't know if you've ever seen some of the movies about baseball and charities and stuff like that. But that's another discussion entirely. So, streaming... And content creation has gotten to that point where it's nothing special if you do it at all. And so what matters more is the why behind it. Why are you doing this? And that's something you got to think about. There is such thing as recreational content creators. And number one, these people have to be acknowledged. And number two... These platforms need to know what to do with them. And I think that's what isn't answered right now. So to go back to our baseball analogy, any of us could go out and just start a game right now. Grab some gear, go out, start playing baseball. We're not going to be as good as the pros. Might be a rather boring game. We might not be fast around the bases. The pitcher will probably throw 20 mile an hour fastballs or something like that. I, you know, I might strike out all the time, never even get a hit. <laughs> oh, the, the thing is, though, we could go out there and we could do that. But if you're somebody with some talent and some skill and you want to amount to something, how do you go about doing that? That's the issue that exists with online media right now is if you want to be something other than a recreational content creator, how do you get to the point where the systems on Twitch and YouTube treat you that way? That is the huge, huge question. Because we have to acknowledge that recreational content creators are going to exist. Because this technology existing at all is a good thing. See, I grew up in the world before widespread internet besides dial-up. 
So this multimedia internet thing is something that I came of age with and starting with my young adult life in college, started realizing this had some potential. It was going to be pretty awesome. And here we are. So just having the ability to stream for free on something like Twitch is an improvement over what was there before, which was nothing. Or maybe if you ever saw a real player stream that was dial-up friendly. Yes, there were, once upon a time, there were formats of streaming media, horrible-looking streaming media, that played through programs like Real Player. Some of them were actually dial-up friendly, so the worst quality in the world. But you could stream live if nothing else was happening on your internet connection. So, yeah, the world, that could never happen again. <laughs> So, not in today's world, definitely not in the world of Windows 10. But that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing with this. So, I grew up in the world where you went over a friend's house and played video games with them. You know, they had whatever the biggest TV was, you plugged the Nintendo or the Sega or the PlayStation in and you played games together. Today, you have the equivalent of that from your phone. Not even a computer, not even your living room watching someone else in someone else's living room, you can watch people play games from your phone, no matter where you are. That by itself is an accomplishment, but technology always has its side effects. And it always has its hucksters, people that are out there trying to sell something to you that's, quite frankly, unrealistic. Like, that everybody can be a ninja. Well, how on earth could... Nin let's say Ninja had an audience of, say... Let's say Ninja streamed on Twitch to 30,000 people. That's more of an XQC number, but how could Ninja have an audience of 30,000 people if everybody was like Ninja? Wouldn't happen. We'd have a bunch of high, we would have a bunch of high production value content creators streaming on Twitch, Fortnite or whatever, and nobody watching because everybody would be, would, would be, you know, so the numbers would drop just because of the size of the audience. It takes a sizable audience in order to have that kind of growth pro potential and stuff like that, and Twitch doesn't have that. The, the quarantine and everything has jumped up the hours watched, but it also jumped up the hours streamed. The strength of the Twitch brand when it comes to streaming is Twitch's worst enemy right now. Everybody wants to be a streamer, so out of all the platforms, streaming on Twitch is most prone to a talent inversion, where there are more people who want to stream and not enough people who want to watch. And there are more people that want to stream more hours, not enough people to actually enjoy what these people are doing. And I'm even talking about, for example, people want to stream more hours and never watch anybody else stream, which could be a detriment to your, your own production as well. When people catch you not having any clue about anything because you're not taking any time to get involved in anyone else's communities or get any ideas besides whatever you think up yourself. And trust me, what you think up yourself is never going to be the best. Other people are going to have good ideas and you're going to be inspired by them. Unless you are so laser focused on what you yourself are doing that you don't, that you don't realize that. A great example of someone on, on Twitch who's in this position that I used to watch is Joanne Tech Lover. There have been numerous times when I'll mention something that a lot of people who are involved in Twitch should know, and she doesn't know at all. She doesn't know it at all. She learned something new because I bring it up in her chat. That's not good. And the same thing, too, if her numbers stagnate because she bought a shotgun microphone and now her keyboard's in the line of fire to the pickup pattern on the mic and she's not doing anything to block out the keyboard noise. So it's clackety, clackety, clackety the whole time she's playing. If this stagnates her numbers and she thinks Twitch sucks because her channel's not growing, because people are tuning her out because they don't want to hear the clack, clack, clack all the time, that's something else altogether. But what do you do with regards to the recreational content creators? That's the issue here. Number one, I think you should acknowledge their existence. There are going to be people on this platform that just want to stream to their friends. So what do you do if you want to build something up? That's, the, that's what these people need to answer. That's what these platforms need to figure out. Because the more people get involved in something like this just to stream to their friends, the harder it is for anybody to amount to anything that actually wants to have some real talent and make something of value and go beyond that. 
But at the same time, you cannot be shutting down the people that just want to recreationally use the platform because there are platforms out there that have collapsed because of that. Take Blip TV, for example. Blip TV used to be a promising competitor to YouTube. They're one of the many YouTube competitors that failed. They were bought out by Maker Studios and Maker started kicking a lot of people off the platform whose content wasn't up to their production standards. They tried to turn it into a walled garden and it didn't work out in the long run and Blip eventually shut down. So the world of online media has already seen what happens when you don't let people just fool around in the ecosystem. And here's the thing. You always have to have the recreational users around because the recreational users could decide they want to get more serious even if they're not when they first get started. That's the thing. So if you don't have these recreational users on platform A, you kick them off. They go to platform B or they don't. Well, the thing is, they're not going to be on platform A when they want to get serious because now they have something against your platform because you kicked them off when they were just fooling around. But if someone wants to get serious, you have to be you have to you have to have this thing where, oh, you can grow on this platform. People have to know they can amount to something. Twitch doesn't have that. It looks like it when you first get started, when you're given this biased view of look at all these people that have grown on Twitch. And then you dig around, you see creator after creator after creator brought their audience from somewhere else. If anything, Twitch is a giant talent mooch. (laughs) The biggest streamers are all bringing audiences from somewhere else. You see it time and again and again. I'm still waiting to hear about the homegrown Twitch streamer that started with zero viewers and actually was able to grind their way up to being big. I, I'm still waiting to hear about this mythical person that I have yet to see ever existing. And that's part of the problem. Primitive technology, which means Twitch is behind the eight ball versus YouTube. And I can tell you, YouTube has a problem with not really having a clear path to start growing your channel outside of what the recreational YouTubers are doing. People just making videos for fun or recording something stupid to show their friends they don't want to get serious about content creation they just want to have fun and they should be allowed to have fun they should also be allowed to have accounts they can come watch your stuff da 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 things like that so i know youtube has problems with that twitch's version of that is going to be a lot bigger because the technology isn't on twitch is not what it is on youtube so (sighs) Trying to figure out what to do about all this is probably going to be a question for the ages.